Marienburg is considered to be the largest trading hub in the Old World, and it stands at the mouth of the River Reich. Long ago, it left the Union of the Empire and has maintained its independence, a trend that ends with the attack of Reich's Marshal Kurt Helmborg. Before the Statue of Sigmar, the forces of Marienburg were routed by the Imperial advance, allowing them to walk into the city without issue. It's later at Helmgard, Captain Ulrich led a defense against an orc tribe, one that was not stopped by the Bretonian Knights for some strange reason. Despite lacking the proper numbers required to hold the pass, his men fought well and his command is noted by Kurt. It's later in the wasteland north of Marienburg that another army from the city-state was encountered, their very last one. The brave Nordland Guard fought well in this engagement. Some believe it's due to the Norskin blood that some of their men have that makes them so strong and durable in combat. They were of course helped and assisted by Fierenberg's finest, knights from Nuln who served the masterful general Jean Fierenberg and his mechanized legion many years ago. Meanwhile, at Helmgard Fortress, Captain Ulrich once again helms the defenses against not orcs but beastmen this time. It'll be up to him to survive and defeat this insipid foe. Captain Ulrich once again commands his men at the fortress of Helmgard. If he does not pass today, if he does not do well today, we're going to lose Reichland. Imagine the Reich's Marshal is fighting elsewhere. He's in charge of the protection of Reichland, which means whoever he put in charge is going to be talented. He is one Imperial Captain you can trust. Now Kazrak, the One-Eye, has come to attack us. The Bretonians are not doing their part. They're meant to hunt them down on that side of the mountain range, but they're not doing that. Thankfully, we do have cannonball towers. And I have situated my soldiers in a slightly different formation. I do have two groups of halberds before my front gate and also Captain Ulrich. I've got crossbows spread all around. They're going to move from the walls later. I'll move my infantry onto the walls to go fight whoever they need to. Their casualties are already extensively high, but their numbers are high too, so they can stomach losses like that. So we're going to do our best, though I don't like the idea of having to fight Kazrak. Kazrak is a very powerful leader. I've got two groups of mortars now, one here and one over there. I've also got one cannon crew. They're going to move up later and fire at the front gate whenever they break down our front gate. Today, you're going to witness the steel and the valiance of all Reichlanders. Some people call them Cosmopolitan. No, these are sturdy, firm people who know how to resist attacks. That is why they do so well. Now here comes a bunch of Ungors now that we're having to fight. We're winning so far. Back over here, the Cannonball Towers are doing extensive amounts of damage to the Beastmen Horde. These Ungors, they have powers and numbers, but I don't know if they can do it here. Our walls are way too strong. Unfortunately for us, we do have a major enemy to worry about. Let's zoom out real quick and get a better perspective. That would be Kazrak the One-Eye, who's currently fighting my great swords, and it looks like he's able to win that fight. There are some archers who are also helping out. But look at that fight. It's not kind. It's not easy. Let's go back out again. But look at the perspective of my cannon crew. They were even able to arc some shots over the walls, but more importantly, they're going to hit that front gate. We've got Ungors who are trying to batter it down. Now, I've got some crossbows on the right wall that I've moved down to the ground. You can kind of see it from their line of sight. They can arc some shots onto the wall to help out our infantry. They do need some help. So now, they have a pretty good shot at hopefully winning that fight. Over here, more crossbows. But I've got halberds in their way fighting them. And the captain is fighting nearby. There we go. But as I told you before, unfortunately, my great swords are being hit by range attacks too, and also Kazrak. Ooh, another man dead. Look at that! One swing and like two men died or three men died. That savage whip too. You're kidding. And all along the wall right now, everyone is holding. Some enemies have gotten inside. They have broken down the front gate. So it's about time for my cannon crew start hitting over here if you hold down alt and you right click here's what you can do with them you can actually just have them attack the ground which is perfect if you just right click they don't always do a great job at that but if you click the ground oh it's pretty nice so we'll keep on trying to hit over there just to kill a few dozen more maybe now 
go look over here. There's my cannon crew. They are currently safe. They're in a guard mode, so if they get closer, we're going to hit them. There we go. That's what I like to see. Get them. Okay. So let's zoom out again, and we can have another look. My swordsmen, they're doing a pretty good job. The battle's pretty equitable between the two. My great swords are not having an easy job of it, having to fight Kazrak alone, and also some Ungors as well. My captain, he's killed many. Look at how many bodies are around him. He's done a great job. And over here, we've got some crossbows that are currently surrounded. If we go further on down, more halberds are fighting back against more Ungors. And over here, unfortunately, some crossbows are engaged in melee. My other crossbows on the right wall, they're under attack by some infantry forces. Some point-blank shots would do it, though, I think. Look at them go. As long as you outnumbered them. My poor swordsmen are about to break up here. That's really unfortunate. I thought they could do it, but the numbers were too great. But look at the pile of bodies over here, thanks to our crossbows. They did so much to help out. And up here is where we have more attacks, but I'm moving my Imperial Knights to come help out. They can help out. My cannon crew can also attack point blank if they need to. I'm not letting them leave their stations. They don't get to today. They get to fight. They get to attack. So that's what they're doing right now. We just need to keep on hitting over there. If we keep on doing that, they'll keep on dropping. That's what I'm talking about. Like that. Just like that. It's now getting late. The siege has been raging on for many hours, but Captain Ulrich continues to rally his men. He's getting ready to charge back in to fight again. He just killed over 40 beastmen on his own. And over the gatehouse, they continue to struggle. Kazrak the One-Eye is a ferocious foe. He's not fighting men. No, we're fighting men. We're fighting some greenskins, but mostly men. Whereas Captain Ulrich, he's got to fight greenskins and beastmen. I don't pity him but nor do I envy him. Over here, our swordsmen are still standing and fighting. Back out here, for anyone who's fleeing, they're just gonna lose that much more. We can see the amount of bodies that we have accrued here. It didn't take much time to gather up a bunch of beastmen corpses. If we look out at the front gate, again, you can see how many were killed by our cannon crew. They did a great job at destroying a lot of them. And there's our mortars landing again. There's going to be some friendly fire, but we're not going to let the fort fall. These men know what they signed up for. They're given their life for something better, for something that is beyond them. Any single person. The captain is over here again. Ooh, the mortars are continuing to rail against the beastmen. A lot of them are now breaking and leaving. The battle is pretty much over at this point. Kazrak is getting out of here, and so are his beastmen. We've done it. Another battle won by our people. We just have to break one or two more groups over here. The great swords are still going for it. Even as the hour grows late, these guys are not stopping. They're anti-infantry. They have two-handed blades, and they're going to be able to break through a bunch of Ungors, whether or not they're tired or outnumbered. That's where they collect a lot of kills, you know. And over here, another group is broken. The swordsmen held out. The gods have not abandoned you. They have stayed with you the entire time. And so that is how we've been able to hold on to our lands once again. We just need Kazrak to leave. It's going to be a long fight to get rid of him. I thought he had fled by now. No, he's still here. Still fighting my poor greatswords. And he's nearly broken now. There we go. He's finally broken. Okay, the battle is over. And we can finally leave. Let's move on, everyone. We had a nice victory. Now we're going to execute the remainders. Kazrak was incredibly difficult, though. 170 kills. All on his own, too. My captain here, Captain Ulrich, 70 kills. He won. Now, let's kill these beastmen and make a few nice rugs out of them. Well, they're probably stinky and mangy, so never mind. We'll just burn them. But if we burn them, we'll probably want to, like, use some type of artillery to fire them over in Bretonian lands. The smell would be familiar to them. You know, crap and poverty. Now, we've got a new turn. What's over here? You've gone after Marienburg. Rupert, these are your people. I just happened to tax them. Now, Kurt has a job. 
to go over here. We are unfortunately having to fight Middenland, but they have caused issues. To issues we cannot forgive. Let's come over here to Rucker's Point. I don't need to fight it out traditionally. Here's a leaden banner, minus 16 to leadership. That is absolutely incredible. I'm going to give that to Hans. Let Hans take care of that. He's going to freaking debuff everyone. And there we go. I lost only 111 men. Time for me to occupy. All right, I gained a storm banner, which I'll look at once I get into another battle. Now let's have a look over here. Ooh, Regsguard supply chain, more replenishment. A lower recruitment cost for all state troops. Imperial peace over here. More public order. More of a tax rate for the local province. And more diplomatic relations. Know your enemy. I can reduce enemy magic. I can get a witch hunter. And plus two to untainted. And finally, mighty leader. Plus ten to leadership. And his aura size, which benefits nearby units and gives them more leadership, would go up. All right. It would expand. Then over here, sword of vengeance. Leadership goes down when fighting Bretonia, all units in army. We get Hunter of Champions. Awesome. Now, let's see. We also have Glorious Charge. That would be a melee attacking ability. There's a lot I need to pick up for him. I don't have time to go down here, down the blue tree. All right, thankfully, everything here is cheap in points to invest in. So that's going to help out a lot. All right, we're going to pick up for now Imperial Peace. I could use more public order, but more importantly, a boost to diplomatic relations can make my life a lot easier. Hans, you'll take training level three. Perfect. All right. I don't have armor for you right now. I don't have a new follower for you either. We can wait there for right now. Nordland, they like us. Good. We need to go over to Middenheim and Middenstag. And I'm now making a lot of money because I took Marienburg. Let's have a look over here. We're still relatively unhappy. That is very true. We need to work on that. I need proper garrisons. I like having that extra money, but we need proper garrisons over here if we want to thrive. In fact, I don't need stables either. I'll keep my blacksmith. I do need that. Good. Oh, once I get over to tier three, look at that. Masterwork weapons and armor resource production, five chests. See, I got a mod that adds in more trade goods. I find that to be fascinating and interesting. It adds more nuance to it all. And over here, we can get the Red Moon in, so I won't be able to use them all. But look who's here, Marcus Kruber. We've got everyone, Barden Gorgson. We've got Victor, blessed my ravaged body, Saltspire, just all of them. That's really cool. I'll probably get Sienna. I could use a good bright wizard, I think. Okay, so Reichlin is doing well. I've got so much money to spend over here. My walls are all building up. My growth is going up. I think I want more. I want Alt Dwarf to elevate. Okay. I want you to level up though. Ooh, 38% chance. That's not very high. What about over here? Not high at all. That wouldn't work out. I'm going to wait to use them. Him and Kurt are rivals. So maybe having them in the same army would be a bit strange. Level three. Okay. Very well. Anyway, we'll look at it now. Storm Banner. Ooh, yeah. Shocked. Magic resistance down. A very powerful ability to have. All right. Let's see. Your armor is fine. You've got all of your gear. It is now about time for me to end my turn. My authority is currently at rank two. And what about over here? What else do we have? Defender of the Empire. People's trust in the Emperor, only 31%. See, we still have more issues from that. I've got to work on that. Okay. Now to end my turn. We have another event here. Talenbeckland demands region. Krugenheim. Historically, the region of Krugenheim has been ruled over by Talenbeckland. Interesting. Now, I could cause issues here. Talenbeckland does like me a lot. These two are rather important to me. Let's give it to Sterling for now. I know. There is no easy choice. Over here, I can get a barracks. I've got the money for it. Good. But I need my proper walls, you know. And my Cinnabar mining pits. Here we go. We'll take that. And over here, too. Going to upgrade Marienburg because I want my Marienburg Harbor. That's a lot more money that I could use. There. Coastal town. Now... It's time for me to move towards another enemy target. Right after I check on Ludwig. 
There, he did it. Now he's rank four. Ooh, hates men? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, but we gained 100 experience per turn. His actions are cheaper. Plus one to recruit rank for all units. And he causes fear against men. Oh, charge bonus plus eight, plus 12 when fighting infantry. And a higher hero action success chance. See, these traits are much more profound and useful now. It'll actually help him in combat, too. So now you can use all of your heroes in a more, let's see, I guess, variety-driven manner. Now, I'm going to give you melee defense. Having you last for a long time is very important. Hey, yeah, it is. All right. Now, Kerr is going to marshal his men, and he's going to move back down over here. We need to go after another enemy. Ooh. We do have Norskins close by. There's a big rebellion, too. Now, back in Marienburg, what should I build that would truly benefit everyone? A tap room is really what I need. We do have public order. It's actually fairly high, thanks to my characters, but we're not always going to be here. We are providing a nice benefit by increasing our content populace. I mean, look at that, plus 5 to tax rate, plus 5 to growth, or 5% to tax rate, just to clarify. But we're done now, and we need to end our turn. I'm going to wait to build up my tap room, or I could just expand my walls. I mean, that's another lucrative and good choice to make. It is said in a time of great need that Volton would come to aid his people. And here he is now. He's a very compelling and interesting character that I would like to use in combat very soon. But for now, we're going to level him up. He's going to be able to age and grow over time. And I'll show you how that's done as we are able to do that. It's really cool. What's over here? Ward save. Minus 10% fighting Skavens, yes, yes. <laughs> He's got blacksmith hammers, and he is unbreakable. We also get plus 10 to diplomatic relations with him, and plus 3 to untainted. I'm not sure what event may have brought him here, but he's here now. And he's got many interesting abilities, but over here is what I'm looking at. So at rank 7, he'll get full plate armor and gall moraz. Then later, exalted of Sigmar, he'll get the armor of the Heldenhammer and a mount too. Eternal hero, he'll never die. We've got Shalia's Blessing. He'll be able to eventually provide 20% casualty replenishment. Right now, he begins with one point in Godly Essence, providing plus one to Untainted. Let's pick up for him Birthmark. There we go. Plus five to character's aura leadership effect and plus five to melee defense. He is a very powerful character. It is for the best. Now, I've spent a few turns moving my army way back down over here. We're going to get ready to go fight the Greenskins in just a moment. Hold on now. I've got to level up my other hero, Ludwig. Yes, General. I'm just leveling him up right over yes, here. Right. He failed, but he's nearly rank 7. Now, I've got a lot of money, and I would like to use a bit of it. I'll save it up then. In one more turn, I'll be able to upgrade Marienburg Docks over into Marienburg Harbor. I'm going to need a tap room to make them happier. And we do have undead close by. If they don't take care of it, I'll have to go in and take care of it myself. Now, I've got a lot of prestige. I could spend a bit of it. I'm not going to yet. I don't need cheaper soldiers. What not yet. It's over here. No, my army is pretty much good to go. I think we are fine. We don't have any other spearmen. We've got a lot of variety. I like having all of my archers here. But of course, we could pick up the bordermen. You know what? We're going to do that. There we go. Grenade launchers. I'm all about variety. Now, here's one group of Imperial Foots. They're very, very powerful. I could get rid of one of my units for that. You know what? Crossbows, you're going to take a break. You two are joining me. It's not cheap, but they're very, very powerful. They should make a big difference. Now, let's end our turn again, and then we'll begin by attacking... Karaberg. They should not be ruled by orcs. Then later, we might even go after Lorelord Force. I'm not too sure yet. When it comes to confederations, I'll be careful on who I pick. A lot of factions like me a lot. Now, the undead, how are they doing? Essen has been retaken. More time has been burned down. Over here, oh, they have a lot of corruption. Things are not looking great in Averland. Whistlelind is still around, Sterlin is still around, but Averlin is gone. They're done now. 
We'll have to liberate them too. Now we have a new event. The Council of States is an important group of advisors that Griffin had demands of running the Empire day to day. There are far too many for one man or woman to keep track of. Prominent family members or nobles of each state are frequently appointed as consultants on matters of imperial law, finance, diplomacy, and military matters, amongst other things. I'm going to try to annex the Golden Expedition later. I don't want it right now. So let's work on Sterling. There we go. I shall endorse Sterling. Now I would like to use Valton in combat. Which means for right now, Luther, I want you to come over here. I'm going to make you a field agent. Actually, we do have corruption issues at home. That is true. We could go to a nearby location and try to reduce it even more. Blast all of their corruption. But anyway, come over here. You do whatever you can. Now, Valton, I'm going to have you join in in just a moment. For now, though, let's go to Karaburg. It's time to fight two factions. I don't need the help of the Golden Expedition. I'll be okay on my own. So here we go. It's time for Volton to come help out. There we are. Training is being done. And right over here at rank 3, we can get against the odds. Three stages total. He'll become even more powerful in combat. That is wild. Damage resistance up. More armor piercing damage and more vigor. It happens whenever he fights in melee combat. All right, let's have a look. I could just go see what he's like in combat. I think that might be interesting. I'm going to give him that banner shocked. Yeah, I think I do want to see him fight. I'm just curious. I need to test him out to see what he's like. And over here, I can't build what I want yet, which is my Marienburg Harbor. I need more money for that. But I also need a tap room, so I don't want to end my turn. I could auto-resolve it. I guess we'll have another bigger fight pretty soon, but... Maybe every greenskin army has been destroyed. I don't know. Fight for our Let's go nation. test out Valton real quick. I need to know how powerful he is. We might be able to use him extensively in this fight. People told me that they would like for me to give a tactical overview before we get into a cinematic battle, and I'm going to try that out today. You can tell me how you feel about it. I do need your feedback. If I know that you like it, I'll keep on doing it. If you don't like it, just let me know. But over here, we've got Valton. Now, Valton is very powerful. He's got a very high melee attack at such a low level of 63 over here he's got shocked we gave him a banner so he reduces magic resistance too so we can combo magic with him and he'll deal even more damage and he also has magical attacks he's got a weapon strength of 380 and armor piercing damage of 150 and look at that a bonus when fighting infantry of plus 50 and he's a low level character right now over time he's going to become so dramatically powerful i cannot wait to see him in combat now let's go look at my actual tactics here so my Karaburg Greatswords are going to help out Valton. I thought that would be right. It would be lore appropriate. We're currently in Karaburg, and they probably want to retake their homeland, you know? So over on my right flank, I've got all of my archers. They are flanked by many of my infantry units, and also my Cav, too, like my Reichsguard Knights. I have my Hartwigs Blasters over here, too. They're going to flank what they can if they need to. And behind them, I've got my Sons of Sigmar and also my Halberds. They're just kind of there to protect all of my archers. On my left flank, I've got all the rest of my infantry. My swordsmen are on the front lines. Right behind them, I've got my Imperial foot soldiers. Then on my left flank, I've got my grenade launchers and my pistoliers. So the idea is that I move up. I move up over here. My archers will take up place over on the right-hand side. My infantry is going to charge right into it. Valton's going to charge right into it around here probably. Then on my left flank, I can use my pistoliers and my grenade launchers to circle all the way around. Then we can go hit all of your archers from behind, hopefully. Now, they do have orc boar boys, so I do want to counter them. I'm sure one group will go after my archers, so my knights will have to go fight them. And we'll see what we can do, but it's a testing ground for Valton. It's his first battle joining us, and I want to see how well he's going to be able to perform. So let's get right into it right now. But the idea is that I focus all of my attention on the middle of the battle map. And I slowly begin to win on my right flank and my left flank until I overwhelm them with firepower and, of course, manpower, too. Valton is now charging in. Imagine you're a greenskin or a human. Then out of nowhere, you see one individual not wearing any armor, some pants, a vest, and carrying two blacksmith hammers. Clearly, that guy has powers you don't know of, or he's just more confident than any human you've ever seen. Either way, he's leading the way. The Karaburg Greatswords are right behind them. Here's a village that has been under attack for a very long time. 
The inhabitants have had to flee and we're going to return their home to them. The Greenskins have had control for far too long. Imagine living in the midst of all of these trees here, what that would look like, what that would feel like at night, the stories that you would tell your children to not go too far into the woods. It wouldn't be safe. We have many individuals who are from here. They are coming to fight right now. Bolton is on his way. He'll be here eventually. It'll all be centered around him and the Karabur Greatswords. We're going to charge in and we're going to wipe out the Greenskin threat. It's just about time for that. And way over here is where we have Hans and also Kurt. These two are going to lead a flanking force. And they're going to go after the enemy leaders too. They're valiant and they know what to do. Our entire army does. So over here, they're moving onto a hill just to oversee the battle. Bolton is standing on his own. Now that is an icon. That is a figure that you can spread tales about. And he would inspire heroism and bravery in those who are near him. So he's going in right now. He's charging in. He's not waiting. It doesn't matter what hits him. He is protected by Sigmar. And so he's here to fight. And there he goes. Now that is an awesome visual. Just him smiting a bunch of goblins. Hmm. Looks a lot like Sigmar to me. The Karaburg Greatswords will take a lot of damage from that charge. Hopefully they'll be okay. Over on the right flank, my units are still moving in. We do have one group of Orc Boar boys that we're having to overwhelm. Thankfully, they were overwhelmed quickly, and now they're fleeing. They're getting out of here. Let's zoom out again and have another look. As I told you before, my pistoliers and my grenade launchers are moving, but here comes a Comet of Cassandora landing right where Bolton is at. Oh, man. And there's our grenade launchers right from behind. Ripping them a new one. They're going to be shelled, and with their low armor, they're going to fall quickly. Let's zoom out again to get a better perspective. So a lot of their units are over here. We're not sending in everyone just yet. I'm going to have my more elite units charge in, of course. On the right flank, I've got my Reichsguard Knights who are pushing in. We can ignore my archers for right now. They're going after more boar boys and also archers, too. So we can see what's happening. They have had all of their attention on the middle, but they ignored their flanks, and that's why we're going to be able to beat them outright. Whatever magic they have doesn't really matter. Whatever powers they have doesn't really matter. There goes Kurt. And of course, as I told you before, all of my grenade launchers slaughtering them. Then my pistoliers can finish off those who aren't blown to bits. So the battle's over. We've won. It was a very quick fight, but it showed us we can win. We won that battle, and that worked out pretty well. Now I know Volton can really leave a mark. Only 32 lost. Oh, I like that T-posing. Nice. It's how he asserts dominance over the heretic, you see. Now we're going to occupy Karaburg. Kerr is now going to cleanse these lands. The steward of his lands, Boris Tonbrinker, couldn't do it. Which means we're going to take care of it. Reichsguard Inner Circle Demigriff Knights. The 20 knights of the Reichsguard Inner Circle is made up of the Order's Finest Warriors who acts as the Reichsmarshal's personal champions and bodyguards. Cool. The Empire. We'll pick that up later when we're able to. Right now, though, I'm on the campaign trail. Know your enemy, mighty leader. Let's pick up Reichsguard Supply Train. There we go. Now we have a higher replenishment. Not that we need more of one, but we have it. Hey. Then over here, Zentler's Men. So now he gets a bonus versus infantry for his Reichsguard. And plus five when fighting against undead for the Lord's Army. Nice. Look at that. And a Vanguard deployment, too. Now I just need to pick him up. Okay, at rank 11 for Heinrich. He's no longer Deeds, but Heinrich. I'm going to give him Magical Reserves there. Who calls? Now in Karaburg, we've got to build some stuff up. At rank 3, I can build a Knight's Panther Chapter House, plus 4 to Public Order. I'll certainly want that. For now, though, a Guard House. I'll have to get my Harbor later. Okay, so we're pretty much done. We just get to end our turn. Then we need to push on to Weizmann. Then maybe the Black Pit. I mean, either way, I've got two foes to fight. That might not be easy once I get up there. Ooh, corruption is still going up. Nor do I like that. Now, I wonder. 
Would anyone like to engage in trade? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Auslan, you too. Come on. Outside of Midland, I don't want to fight any of you. Who's left now? There's a few other factions here. I'll sort by attitude instead. Yeah, Kurt has really established a lot of very firm and powerful relationships. We can't trade with the dwarves yet, which is a shame. I was hoping that we would be able to do so, but not yet. No. Oh. Oh well. It was worth a shot. Who's over here? Oh, Ludwig. Okay. Sword of Justice. I'm not going to use you in combat yet. What's over here? Soldier of the Empire. Yeah, we'll probably use Carl eventually. I'm not sure when, but maybe eventually. Here we go. Plus five to melee defense for Empire Captains and plus five to melee attack as well. Cool. Okay. So we're over here. I don't have the money to go after Middenheim. That is okay. But now it's time to end our turn. Now, what can I do over here? The Golden Expedition is under attack from some Ratman invasion. Kurt is going to send out nearby mercenaries. I've got the prestige for it. Oh, look at that. I've got my group together. Let's go fight some Skaven and hopefully win. We don't want them to lose land right now. I don't want them to lose anything at all. We'll probably need their help fighting the undead later, or they could overwhelm us. We're only in the very beginning of our campaign, so things are calm and easy right now, but eventually they're going to escalate and quickly. Time for tactical overview number two. Now, I'm the flanking force here. We're coming out into the trees. That means I can hide. I want them to engage our allies first, then I may be able to move in and fight them. It's a really cool map too. I would love to have more custom maps like the one we're on. Look at how incredible that looks. Wow. You could even fight inside? You're kidding me. Oh, that's so cool. Now, if I was defending, I would probably stay back over here, but they're charging out. Now, they've got some free company militia, swordsmen. We're looking at empire knights too, crossbowmen, more great swords, and even pistoliers. So they're probably going to fight their battle around over here and over here. I'm going to pop out and probably negate any of their elite units that I'm able to. Now, they have night runners. Those are pretty good. A lot of them, actually. Three groups total. Skaven slaves. And more importantly, they've got some very dangerous bits of technology, like warfire throwers, in addition to a warlord. And way, way down over here is what I'm going to focus on. Rattling guns. I'm going to take some losses, but we've got to kill them. If we don't do that, we're going to lose a lot. And I'll show you why. Look right over here. Suppressed. So whenever I have anyone charging them, they're going to be slowed down. Anyway, let's get right into the battle. The mercenary detachment hired by Kurt is now on their way. He wouldn't just hire mercenaries if they weren't known for doing a good job. And so here they come. We have many soldiers here who used to be professionals who served the state, but now they've got their own path in life. However, the tactics and formations they use will be similar. And here they come. Now the deck gunners, the deck gunners, the rattling gunners are going to be a huge threat. Those are the ones I'm worried about. If you put them in a proper position, they can obliterate an entire company of men. But here's one of the coolest maps I've ever seen. Have a look at that. That's what we're defending right now. We need more custom field battle maps like the one we're on or settlement maps like this here. As I told you just now, it is one of the coolest maps I've ever seen. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even defend inside of the caves. <laughs> How cool. Am I in Shadow of War? Which is not a bad thing. I love that game so damn much. All right, let's wait now. The Knights are moving up. We've got a lot of elites, and I think we've got a pretty good chance at winning. I mean, let's have a look. They're moving in right now. And I'm going to come out later. I'll have to go after those gunners. Those rattling guns are too much. There's only 32, but they can, again, kill hundreds if left unattended. But they're not going to be left unattended. We're going to kill them. So here they go right now. I'm now beginning to move. Here comes my knights. They're going to charge in very soon. And we'll have to do what we can to win this fight. Now, let's witness a great battle. I'm still getting a handle on what I want to do for my more narrative series here. And eventually, with all of your feedback being given to me, I'll figure things out. And we'll have a better product over time that all of us can enjoy. 
<laughs> now they've got storm vermin. Storm vermin are hardy. They're very tough. I don't want to fight them, but unfortunately I've got to. Here they come, just skittering over here. I've got some knights moving over around because I want to hit those rattling gunners. I said deck gunners because I have fought a lot of vampire coast armies in my day. But there they go now, hitting my empire knights. Unfortunately, many are going to fall, but it won't be the last samurai. We're still going to be able to beat them. Did something blow up? I actually don't know. <laughs> I zoomed in briefly, but then I heard a loud bang. Ooh. That suppression does a lot. You can see what they're doing to us now. All right, they're moving. But my knights have finally met them, so we can destroy them. Now, let's have a look elsewhere. We're unfortunately having to fight a lot of storm vermin. I've got my handgunners on their flank. That's intentional. I want them to be close. I want them to hit them hard and quickly. Now, let's look over here. Our allies are fighting their warlord. The infantry is having to hold them back. I wouldn't want to do that myself. Personally, it's not a job that I would envy in any situation. They've got warp fire throwers. I hope there's a lot more friendly fire than anything else around here. That would be a very scaven thing to do. Feels weird having humans die over some orc settlement. It's meant to be a dwarf one, but you know what that looks like. My knights are still fighting because they've got to hold. My handgunners are still close by, but they've got to move again. I've got some knights who are fighting the storm vermin. They're hardy, they're tough, they're strong. It's difficult to win. And over here, we've got our Huntsman General, 11 kills right now, who's holding back an entire group of Skaven. He's fighting on his own, though. He's a grand mercenary, renowned for his efforts on the battlefield. Now, let's zoom out again and have a brief look. So we can see what's going on. Our allies are holding them back. Over here, we've got some knights charging in, going after their warfire throwers and damaging them heavily. Oh, no. Now we have our own handgunners attacking a bunch of Skaven, helping out our Huntsman General. It's a great way to beat them, too. You see, I have only one entity over here. If I had, like, a full group, there might be some friendly fire. But here comes my handgunners moving closer. They're going to get some plank, some plank, some point blank shots. And then further out, my Empire Knights are still having to hold against a group of Storm Vermin. But they're going to move away quickly and charge back in. Now, way over here, it looks like we have an allied leader who's holding them back. Look at that. One Empire Captain and Greatswords all fighting. I mean, when you look at the Skaven, they're not tiny rats, man. They're huge. Wow. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Defend your settlements. Don't worry, Golden Order. I'm here to help out. Let's go look over here again. Those knights did a great job at shattering so many of them. Even their slingers are being overrun right now. So over here on the right flank, they had a very easy time at winning. Unfortunately, again, they're having to fight that warlord. That warlord is taking quite some time to beat. But we're going to focus on beating their army over here. Oh, who's fighting there? I didn't even see that when I was playing previously. Swordsman fighting even more Skaven. Now that's an awesome battle. Little with blood and swinging of blades and hopefully we're going to be able to win him we've got to be able to win these battles if we don't again lands will fall we don't want that we're having to tend to an entity a large one now their great swords are charging in and they look to be at full strength our pistoliers are close by too oh what's over here free company militia great they're also flanking a bunch of these Skaven, so pretty soon they're all going to break and the battle will be over. You can see what they're doing right now. These Valiant Soldiers are killing so many different Skaven. There could be some friendly fire like there. But the Skaven are fleeing quickly. Because these brave men of the Empire do not know when to quit, and they never will. Now, let's go look over here again. These Empire Knights, they're charging down a bunch of fleeing Slingers. You won't be slinging anymore. Your slinging days are over, rat men. And you can see what we've done. These pistoliers have moved up and they've killed a lot. Here comes even more knights. I love that their knights are being proactive. You need that. Once your foes have fled, if you get some knights on them, 
they're all gonna drop dead soon after. So they're still killing some of these freaking Skaven. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. Now let's zoom out again. Most of their units are breaking. That Warlord might take some time. But once they all break, we can get out of here. Go great swords. I mean, if I wanted to be with any fine group of infantrymen, it would be great swords. I wouldn't want to fight in some tightly confined location. That would be a bad idea. But look at the carnage over here. It doesn't look like much, but it's what is going to determine our smaller scale battle. I actually like smaller scale battles. Skirmishing means a lot to me. I find it to be enjoyable. Having to make do is so little. Not every battle needs to be like 5,000 men fighting 5,000 undead or whatever. Sometimes you just want a good handful of men fighting a good fight. So we've taken care of their entire army. All but one warlord. He's going to break soon though. We're going to watch these units fight him. I'm not going to have to get involved. Not that it really matters. I don't get to keep the army here. It'd be cool if I got to like equip and keep my own army though. That would be very cool for these types of the fights. That's a big old rat. My God. Someone get the rat poison. We even have some free company militiamen who were shooting in. That rat is about to break, but you can see how many kills it got. My God. That's way too much. Come on, halberds. Poke it to death. Do something to it. That's a long, long battle. I hope they're going to be able to win. That's going to mean a lot to me if they're able to win. If they can't win, that's unfortunate. There goes our Imperial Charge, and the battle is over. They've lost. Let's get out of here now. That was a good close victory. No, that was a pretty easy one, I think. Their leader got 135. Wow, that's a lot of kills. Okay, so we're just going to take up a bit more of the Dead Skaven. I'm not going to get money from them. I'm just going to kill them. I just can't really reconcile that. Even though, practically, I should just take the money. No. It's Gaven. Savior. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, Hans, goodbye. Even though that's a great trait to have. To now let's move on. Ooh, Vault and Rank 4. All that extra experience is really panning out. What's over here? We're not fighting Beastmen, nor are we fighting Chaos right now. So I'm going to give you Impassioned. You could use a bit more melee defense. He's taking a lot of damage in combat. I, don't I mean, he's still agree. at a low level. All right, we're here. We can auto resolve for that one. I'm going to He's occupy it. It'll take time to invest in the area and to make it actually prosperous, but I'm willing to do that. Here we go, a woodman's hut. Trade goods, I like it. Ooh, and a ruby ring of ruin for a free fireball. Even better. Okay, so we're almost to unstoppable attacker. We're at superior. And over here, orc spain. So now we get more campaign movement range, more hit points, more leadership, and more income if I ever choose a saggy location. Okay, Kurt. Let's have a look now. For Hans, oh, well, not Kurt, but Hans, I'm going to give you, let's see, Devastating Charge. Surprisingly, you do not have a lot of armor, even though you're completely encased in armor. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give him more armor. Let's do that. All right, Ready. so we can wait here for one turn. Luther, I'm going to put a point over into Destroyer of Corruption. There we go. If I ever want another Warrior Priest... Don't be at a decent level thanks to him. I've got so many heroes, but not enough room for them yet. Wait until I get a second army, but I need a lot more money for that before I could do that. Okay, grazing pastures. Yeah, I'll pick that up. Could use more trade goods for trade. And over here, I could use a tap room for that extra public order. Okay, Ludwig. Can you assault? You can. Good. He's nearly rank eight now. And their garrison is probably going to be pretty small by the time I get up there. We'll still probably go after Lorlorn. I don't like the idea of leaving them around, though they kind of like me. I mean, they could be a good deterrent to fight Beastmen if I gave them military access. You know what? We might do that. If we can actually ally them and have a good relationship, we could do that. Then they might pop out to attack wandering armies, and I like that a lot. I don't have the pathways they do, so they can move around quickly, whereas me, I've got to go through here on preordained roads. Time for another dramatic battle. Now they've got an orc shaman, so I'm gonna watch out for that. I've got my border men over here, but I love them so much and I'll show you why. So not only do they have explosives, 48 missile strength, 
They've got an armor piercing of 7. They've got an armor piercing explosive damage of 23. They can deal so much damage. If you do it just right, if you put them in the right position, they will obliterate everyone. It's awesome. They're going to be helped down by my knights where they're able to. We're going to move up over here. And we're going to try to react to them and just obliterate them with a bunch of flanking maneuvers and, of course, ranged attacks. I've got my blasters close by. They'll probably move over here and just kind of react to anyone who's charging down from the trees. Let's have a look on the right flank. So over here, we've got my swordsmen and all of my leaders in one area. I usually don't like having this many hero characters in one group, but I kind of have to, right? We've got Luther Huss and Valton all working together with... Of course, Hans and Kurt. Now, they're going to charge up, and they're going to form up a good shield over here. We're going to fight in the trees if we need to. We'll have our knights just focus on fighting in the woods over here on the left flank, and we'll just begin to push them back over time. Of course, their magic is going to deal a lot of damage. Anyway, let's get into it. Kurt's army is now moving in. Unfortunately, we do have an orc shaman with their reinforcing army, so let's watch out for that. They're going to use a lot of magic to rip through us. Valton and Luther Huss are fighting on foot to help on our infantry. Hans and Kurt are fighting on horseback. That's where they belong. Now everyone's moving up and we're going to react to them as best as we can. Ooh, there goes one magical spell right through our formation. That's unfortunate. There's going to be a lot more damaging spells too. Orc shamans have great spells when it comes to inflicting great deals of damage in an area. Like that. But here we are. Hopefully he'll either run out of magic or we'll be able to destroy his army before he's able to use too many more spells. We've got some orc air boys close by. And I'm going to have all of my archers focus on them. Even though we've got trees here blocking missiles, we should still be able to damage them to the point where they want to flee. Yeah, look at that. There we go. That's what I'm looking forward to. Seeing a bunch of orcs die. And here comes my army now. They're moving up, led by Kurt and Hans. Valton and Luther Huss, they're charging forward too. Look at that. The Hammer Squad. All right, let's have a look at what they have. Here's that reinforcing army that came out of here on my right flank. I've got some grenade launchers who are shelling them. And they're now charging in. I've got my Auslan Vanguard units on the front lines, that Imperial Foot group that I have. Now I have two of them, so they're all charging in. We're holding them back right now. And so far, it's working out because the goal is to hold them back as long as we're able to. Ooh, comes one of their leaders. I've got some handguns on my left flank that are shooting at a few of them. Oh, that was a devastating body slam. Let's zoom out again and have a look. So over here in the trees, we're winning. We took some damage, sure, but we're pushing them back now. There goes Luther Huss and also on Zentler. Now, they've got their reinforcements on the way. In the woods, I've got my ranks guard who are moving through the trees. They're taking some damage from ranged enemy attacks. I hope that Orc Shaman doesn't have a foot of Gork. Now, a foot of Gork would do a lot. And right now, I've got Kurt chasing after that Orc Shaman. We've got to get rid of that Orc Shaman if we want to survive. Here comes more magic again. Hitting us from behind, killing a few of our soldiers, but we're still holding on. Let's zoom out again, and we can see what's happening. So I'm holding right over here with all of my different units. I'm slowly beginning to push up. Here comes their reinforcements. There is a Uranus Thunderbolt hitting them. They still have their Orc Great Shaman. Over here, I've got my Reichsguard. We're getting ready to fight some Orc boys who are buffed up by an Orc Wa. Over in the trees, we've got my swordsmen, my sons of Sigmar, still chasing them. I've got one group of swordsmen over here on my right flank chasing after a broken group of orc boys. Now, let's go back in and watch the battle. Ooh, there's that enemy commander surrounded by my Karaburg greatswords. And there goes another explosive attack from their orc shaman. Now, I did move my grenade launchers behind them. Their goal is to hit anyone who's over here. Archers, infantry whomever it doesn't matter too much and that is how kurt is going to lead his battle more infantry is charging in we've got kurt over here leading in the middle of a bunch of our imperial foot soldiers 
He's at least getting some kills and putting down some orc boys, burying them. Now, I've got a group of Reichsguard who are fighting those orc boys. Unfortunately, they haven't done a lot of damage and they've taken a lot of damage. I mean, they've done some, but not enough for such a basic enemy group to be hit by Reichsguard. Now, over here, we're going after some orc archers and we're winning that fight. My grenade launchers have obliterated them. They're going to change their target and hit these archers over here that are coming back in, these nine goblin archers. Back in the throes of the infantry battle that we're having, I've moved up my archers too on my right flank. So they're holding up. And they're slowly beginning to break, all of them. It was a long fight, but over here we've got to win it. We've got to find a way to win the Battle of the Black Pit. You see, I had Kurt charge out to the Black Pit to finally get rid of all of them. To just kind of strangle out the head of the orcs. They've used another wall to buff up again. There's my grenade launcher still shelling all these different units who are trying to charge back in. Then when it comes to what's left, we're just fighting some archers, some night goblin archers, and a few other units who are still alive. My knights are running right through them. My first group of Fuhrenberg's finest, they're not doing very well. But look at these grenade launchers, man. They can just attack and move away. It's a safe way to destroy your enemies. Like that guy there. Just fire a few for fun. Now they're turning back around. Let's get more of them. Come on. I want to see these orcs dead. Now that was a great attack. I like that. Let's zoom out again. Okay. So the battle's pretty much won. The battle of Black Pit wasn't too difficult. We took some casualties. Unfortunately, here's Clubba. A black orc big boss is coming back. I've got some great swords who are charging towards him. Now, those great swords have 112 left. That's a lot. They did not take a lot of casualties. I don't care how orky you are, these great swords are going to beat you. <laughs> what a way to fight, though. I'm just going to throw my literal weight around. So now we're just pursuing the remainders of their forces. Kurt was able to beat them, though. Kurt was able to fend them off, and he was able to send in the right amount of firepower to flank them and destroy them. The Reichsguard, they work together to go after those orc boys. They're still fighting a group though. 57 are left. We're not meant to be stationary that long. I tried to pull back my Reichsguard, but they were entangled again. Come on, take care of them. There we go. It's a slow fight, but they're doing it. Okay. Let's have a look again. Most of our enemies are broken now. Most of them are fleeing. So we just have, what, that one group left. That's it. Don't forget, whenever they show that skull and that bloodied flag, that means that they're shattered. And the battle is finally over. We've broken the last of the orcs. Let's go home. We just earned a lot of gold. And let's see here. Time to destroy more of them. We're going to take the Black Pit. That's going to belong to me. We'll need to rename it some apt and accurate name. Maybe a shrine to Sigmar. Nobnels is gone. We've got a new regiment of renown. I'll probably replace my current handgunner group with that. The White Wolves, too. Ooh, a group of huntsmen. We're getting a lot of regiments of renown. Nice. Okay. Rank 16. I'm going to give you Know Your Enemy. There we go. Want all of my special abilities here. Nice. Okay. Heinrich. Heinrich von Krinkel. I'm going to give you a Comet of Cassandora. No, actually, Chain Lightning. Let's get a nice even spread, then we'll specialize more. What does the Emperor bid? Okay, I've got to build up my Battering Ram. It I can't just born. attack it, even though they are greatly, Stop. greatly weakened. They do have an army close by, but they have only one settlement left anyway. Okay, I've got some money. I'm going to save what I have because I want to build over here that harbor. I want my land ship, but more importantly, I want that extra money. I need over 7,000, I almost said dinars, gold coins for that. <laughs> now we're easily He's able cool. to take over the Black well, Pit. Not camera. an issue at all. They've already been broken down. No more orcs over here in Middleland. You're welcome, Middlelanders. All right, I'm going to occupy it. Yes, and here's what we're going to do. We're just going to convert into something lucrative. But first off, I need my basic walls. But before my basic walls, I need my harbor. That is way too much money to ignore. 500 more gold? Heck yeah, man. There we go. There goes Clubba and Nagbad. Those two have been killed off by Kurt's army. 
Okay, Kurt is currently at rank 17. I'm going to give him Mighty Leader. Later, we can get Sword of Vengeance. Very nice. A new ability, a debuff, a hex ability. Reducing speed, armor, and melee defense. Then over here for Hans Zentler, what are we going to give him? I can get second in command in two levels. So for now, we're just going to give him Foe Seeker. There we go. And for Heinrich, I'm going to give him Arcane Conduit. We could use more magic. Then for Valton, what else do we need? Let's see. I think I'm going to give you... It's over here. Chaos Slayer? No, we'll wait on that. Instead, I'll give you Impassioned. Again, he needs a lot more melee defense if he wants to survive on the battlefield. Here we go. Volkmar's Disciple. We also have over here Grand Soulfire. Ooh, these are all really good, actually. Here is Chosen Sigmar. For melee defense and damage resistance. But for now, sure, we'll take Volkmar's Disciple. He's not going to be embedded in his army, but I just want to have that there. And done. We're not going to have too many difficult battles, at least not for a few turns, so he'll level up again. Okay, the Black Pit. I suppose for now, I can get a tap room. Sure. We could use a tap room. I did pick up Wrecker's Point. Alright. Then, Ludwig. You better keep on assaulting their garrison. It's a great way to minimize all of their defenders before I even get there. Darkness within Osland, really? He causes fear against the forces of destruction. He gets rampage against them too, and he'll become unbreakable. Oh yeah. It's over here. The Emperor's Standard. Disciplined. Ah, very nice. Leadership aura size increase of 50%. Missile resistance of 30%. That's all really good. So disciplined. This unit does not suffer a leadership penalty when the Lord dies. It can also rally after rounding more often. Oh, cool. Alright. Let's pick up for now Deadly Blade. There we go. I'm just going to keep on leveling him up. Now, Sienna, I am going to pick up once I have a bit more money. That'll take time, but I think we're almost ready for a new turn. Okay, now what else could I use? It's all going to be about my economy for now. I like the idea of quickly building up any buildings I have. So let's get continuous production for now. More income from industry and buildings will be cheaper too. I need to make sure that I can expand as quickly as I'm able to. Yeah. All right. Now, for a new commandment, we'll take more public order. I want to make my people happy. If I do that, I'll get more benefits. And I need those benefits. But we have come so far. I mean, look at what we've done already. What we've conquered. That's a lot. I had no idea we would be able to push that far. I wonder how they're doing over here. Now, if my dwarf allies need help, I can tell you right now, we're going to honor the pact and we will go down there and we will destroy the greenskins. We'll have a grand expedition. So, after we win... All the way over here. We can choose where we want to go. In fact, if I wanted to, I could stage my own invasion of the Dark Elves' homeland. I could invade the Southlands. I can go to Lustria to help out the expedition. I could do whatever I want to do. So it's really up to who's a great power and who is a threat to Reichland. And, of course, the Empire proper. But now, let's end our turn. The Reich's Marshal has come to Middenheim. Ludwig was able to damage their army. So now they don't have nearly as many soldiers. But we've got to build up our siege towers to go fight them. Absolutely Ooh, not. Born is close by too. And the Graf Boris Tonbringer has come back. Obey. Evidently, he was hiding and waiting, but he's over here now in Wiseman. So we'll have to watch out for him. He's got another legendary item, a Talisman of Ulrich. Now back at home, I'm currently tier 4. I would like to get my castle Reichsguard. If I get that, I'll be able to recruit Reichsguard Inner Circle Demigraph Knights, which are very good, and my Reichsguard units will be 5% cheaper as well. So, we've got a lot happening. Nordland also attacked Bretonia. I had to break my alliance with them because I didn't want to be drawn into another war. And unfortunately, we've got some greenskins who are left. So, we've done a lot of damage, but we're going to have to come back and clean up. There's going to be some towns that are being hit once again, which I do regret. But we have only one army right now. I need a lot more money if I want to have even more units. Right now, my upkeep is incredibly high at 4,547. Not to mention, there's a raiding enemy force close by. Now, Marienburg. Two more turns, then we'll have our harbor. We should call it here for right now. But once we return, it'll be time to go after Midland once and for all. We're going to destroy them. And we're going to have their people join Reichland proper. 
They have betrayed us. They sent rebels down here to fight us, and so they must pay for that. And over here, we'll take care of the Greenskin army. Hopefully, my garrison will be able to beat them. They might be able to. That is only a very small army. After that, we'll see what we'll do. We can have a look over here and see how bad things are to the east. There's a lot of vampiric corruption. It's not looking good. I mean, look at that corruption just spread everywhere. Okay. Until then.